What the fuck is up? Higher point of view here. It is your West Coast Packer backer. Here to discuss Aaron Rodgers. QB1 has spoken, so I think we should listen, y'all. And uh, yeah, man, we trying something different today, bro. Like, I'm in the house bored as hell. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I'm about to smoke right now. Why not go to the motherfucking whip and, and just share my thoughts with y'all, y'all? Like, this shit is just amazing, you know? Like, before all this shit started, like, I used to work at one place, and man, I used to go at it with all the customers, this, that, and the third, and people used to really watch me like, dude, you talk about sports all fucking day long, you know, like, you don't get tired of that shit, nigga, hell no, I don't get tired of that shit, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now, and this just for my real ones out there, bro, nigga, it's like 1 a.m. out in this motherfucker in L.A., and, uh, you know, I just had an itch, bro, we gotta talk Packers, bro, you know, I'm just watching all these interviews, and, you know, Again, when 12 talking, we got to motherfucking listen, bro, because not only is he a quarterback, but, bro, he getting paid a lot of money. He damn near an executive. And um, get y'all a couple examples of, you know, why he's an executive or it's similar to it. And, you know, things are getting better in Packerland, bro. This is shit that he was complaining about last year before he held out a training camp and did all that shit last year. He just was like, man, put me in the loop. And it seems like he's in the loop. So, uh, yeah, man, we're going to talk about Aaron Rodgers right now, his little conference, press conference, you know, I ain't going to listen, I ain't going to do all these motherfuckers press conferences, you know, hey, I might, I might not, y'all motherfuckers talking about y'all miss me, hey, don't say you miss me and shit like that, because I'll drop a video every day on y'all motherfucking ass, y'all can get tired of me, bro, but, um, yeah, let's, uh, well, shit, I'm going to put out a disclaimer right now, too. I'm going to just put that energy out in the universe because, you know, I'm really uh, high on universe and shit like that. And just, you know, the energy you put out is the energy you're going to get. It's late as fuck right now, okay? I don't need no motherfuckers walking up to my car. You know, when niggas about to rob you and shit, they motherfucking, they, uh, they ask the dumbest shit. Oh, you got a cigarette? Oh, you got a light? Oh, you got a... Hey, I don't need nobody coming up to my car right now, my nigga. I don't need nobody coming up to my car asking me no motherfucking questions. Because uh, I'm just going to... You know. I'm just going to answer the questions later. If I could find a goddamn lighter in this motherfucker. Is this shit going to work? I found this. Oh, hell yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's the disclaimer out for the universe, man. Don't come up asking me no weird-ass questions or nothing like that at this time of night. Don't even walk up to my car, you know? So, don't do none of that, y'all. Not y'all, but the people, you know? Plus, it's been crazy out here, bro. Motherfuckers been getting robbed left and right. Niggas killing each other. Like, bro, LA, slow down. Shootings on freeways, all kind of shit. But let's get into what the fuck we getting into. And that's Aaron Rodgers. He speaks. And I'm just gonna just give y'all the pinpoints of, uh... Just what I think of everything, y'all. I know y'all seen the interview or whatever, so uh, let's get this started. Shit, this basically gonna be a weed review, too, because a motherfucker just gave me some free weed. You know, he like, bro, I got some fire. I'm just gonna give you some. So this is gonna be a weed review, too, bro. Uh, So, yeah, if your shit ain't whack, I mean, if your shit whack, I'm gonna let you know tomorrow, nigga. If I see you tomorrow, bro, don't just don't don't be giving me no 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 bullshit, bro. You know I'm higher point of view. But Aaron Rodgers. Okay. We're going to start off with Devontae. Devontae and... Uh, oh, yeah. I'm testing out this little light, too, y'all. I got me a little night light. You know what I'm saying? You know, my, my videos most of the time... See, it's a nigga on the bike right now trying to come over here. Videos most of the time... um, It'd be daytime and shit. Even, even when I drop a video like at midnight or 11, it might still be daytime. But, uh, you know, shit. I got the night light. So, you know, we about to get it in. Aaron Rodgers, bro. So first of all, let's talk about the Devontae deal. And now, this is it, y'all. I'm closing out this Devontae thing, unless it's ass, you know, or something like that for me. But uh, Aaron Rodgers said, you know, he was in, you know, in contact with him the whole time when all these discussions was happening. He said they still cool. He loved Devontae. They got a great relationship. It is what it is. I didn't have motherfuckers coming up to me talking about, Oh, you guys let the best receiver in the world, uh, in the NFL just leave. First of all, when I was calling the motherfucker the best receiver in the league, y'all motherfuckers was laughing at me. But now the nigga leave. Now you just like, that's why I don't, y'all people be killing me, bro. Y'all look for every narrative, just like another one. So that's the one I don't like another one. Oh, who are you going to give it to replace Devontae? 
Nigga, that question is going to be answered too. And it ain't going to be answered by me. It's going to be answered by 12 if y'all motherfucking listen. So when it comes to the Devante thing, Aaron said, you know, clearly he wasn't happy or he wasn't thrilled about it, but he did talk to Devante about it. And he said the Packers made an effort to make the deal better so he can stay. So this nigga just wanted to leave, y'all. He just wanted to leave. He also said that him and, and Devontae talked about timelines. This might be what it was about. Because Aaron might have told him, like, bro, I got about two, three years left, bro. You know, maybe one, maybe two. You don't know how Aaron is. Again, like I said, this nigga retire every year. So, like, his timeline and Devontae's timeline might have just not matched up. But, again, what's done is done. We got the picks for it. We already got the players we got for Devontae. But I'm just letting y'all know and letting all these Packer haters know they were in talks and all that. Aaron and Devontae were talking the whole time. There's no, like, there's no malice on each side or nothing like that. Devontae, this might have been a family deal. This might be his last big contract. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be his last big contract. So he got to start thinking about where he want to raise his kids, where he want to do this, where he want to do that. Vegas ain't bad. And, you know, he's closer to home, which is in the Bay Area, which ain't far from Vegas. It's a lot closer than it is, you know, from Wisconsin to the Bay. And listen, God bless you, uh, Devontae, and God bless your cousin who died, who got shot. One of your cousins got shot about two weeks ago and died. So even things like that, now you're closer to home. You'll be able to handle stuff a little easier. No shit like that needs to happen, but you already know it's California. I told y'all it's going down over here. So, you know, again, don't come up to my car asking me nothing. Don't ask me no questions. Don't ask me nothing. Because I'm going to ask questions after, afterward. So, um, uh, yeah, so that just shows the CEO, not CEO, but just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Executive in him. You know, he's on the phone calls with Devontae. They're talking about each, each other's career paths. And at the end of the conversation, Aaron Rodgers told Devontae, what do you want me to do? What do you need from me? Devontae said, get me to motherfucking Las Vegas, you know? And Aaron did that. Now y'all thinking like, how'd Aaron get him to Las Vegas? First of all, I do believe the Packers were willing to play hardball at least for a few weeks or half a season with letting just Devontae play on that franchise tag because we had all rights to him now. He couldn't go nowhere. He was definitely going to be a Packer this year. So, you know, just to, you know, we've been in offseason drama for the past two, three years. So, you know, it's nice now, you know, the drama's over with early. Now we can focus on, uh, you know, now we can focus on getting the team better, getting everybody acclimated, you know, and shit like that. But as, that just shows you that Gouda Kentz and uh, Mark Murphy, everybody in the in the in the, in the office, they 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 were they're giving Rodgers what he wanted. They're giving him the respect that he should deserve as a four time MVP. I say five time because he won the Super Bowl MVP, the greatest player I've ever seen with my eyes, bro. You know, like you ain't gonna take that away from me. He is the greatest quarterback I ever seen. Anyway, that's that's another subject. So, again, the Packers were probably willing to play hardball with this, but Devontae telling Aaron that, it was kind of like a buffer to make it a little easier. So Aaron probably told the front office, like, look, man, he wants to leave. I'm okay with it. Let's get, you know, some picks. Let's get what we can, and let's get him out of here, and let's get this over with. That's all he needed Aaron to do was just to drop that to the front office because, you know, that helps the front office. That basically makes the job easier for them. I don't know if they were going to do that beforehand or what, but I'm telling y'all, I think I thought they was going to play hardball. I did not think he would be traded that early, but uh, it's over with. But that just lets you know where Aaron Rodgers stands in this organization. Goody listened to his 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 uh rant last year before, you know, the season started. Hey, just involve the motherfucker. That's all. Give him a call. Hey, say, hey, we might, we think about doing this. How you feel about that, Aaron? So he's finally getting the respect I think he deserves. Same thing with Sammy Watkins. With Sammy Watkins, the first Packer he talked to was Aaron Rodgers, bro. So I'm going to put that in leadership. You know, Aaron Rodgers is a leader. You know, he's calling over, uh, you know, he's FaceTiming Sammy like, hey, man, hey, welcome. Let's work. Let's do what the fuck we need to do. Bro, this is our quarterback, bro. This ain't no Carson Wentz. This ain't no, who the fuck else? No disrespect, Dak Prescott, but this motherfucker got power within the organization and what he says is really important. So I hope y'all listen to that interview he did. We gonna move on. 
Now, there's two different things. Now, you can come up with a question or just start talking about somebody un, um, unprompted. Or they can ask you, what's up? Aaron did both. They asked him. He wasn't talking about none of the rookies. They asked him about the rookies first. They was like, okay, well, how do you feel? Da, da, da. He basically said it was nice to meet him. It's all good. I'm glad we got him. Where, you know, Christian was a high pick. We, you know, you know, we got expectations, but we're going to limit the expectations. But he said, I don't even want to talk about him. That's basically what he said. So that's telling me. And listen, y'all. I told y'all, I think on my big homie series, when I was talking to Sammy Watkins, I told Sammy like, bro, we going to need you at least for the first half of the season. Definitely week one, week two, week three, just to be that wide receiver one or wide receiver two, which he's going to be. And to piggyback off of what I just said about that, hey, again, y'all see my reviews on these rookies. I think they're going to be Hall of Famers, but you got to be real, too. That's why Aaron Rodgers said limit expectations. Not only limit expectations, but uh, look who we got, though. Look, now, I told y'all, too, come Minnesota, it's going to be Sammy Watkins. And this is what Rodgers said. It's going to be Sammy Watkins. Alan Lazard with Kabi at the slot. Those three guys are definitely going to be in there on the first snap of the game. Now, whoever they pepper in for that, you know, fourth receiver or, you know, whoever they pepper in, you know, trying to get him acclimated and all that, that's cool. But, y'all, for him to just name drop these three names and talk significantly about them, them motherfuckers is going to be starting. So if y'all think Christian Watson, Romeo Dubs, Samari Torrey just about to be in there week one as wide receiver one or wide receiver two, it is not happening, y'all. And it's okay. So um, another thing, and these this was what I meant when I said when nobody asked you nothing. They didn't ask him shit about this. He, he brought up Sammy Watkins himself. He brought up Alan Lazard himself. He brought up Randall Cobb himself. So that already means that them motherfuckers is going to be starting. And, you know, we're going to have to pepper in, like I said, Watt, Watson, Dubs, and Torre if he makes it, you know. So where I'm at, okay, the leader that Aaron Rodgers is, just for example, no disrespect to Rashawn Gary. I guess he's my twin. Somebody said I look like him. I look way better than him. But um, if you were to ask, you know, just 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 interview Rashawn Gary just about, you know, football, like I'm sure he's just going to talk about himself. He's going to talk about his defense and defensive coordinator and, co you know, linebacking core and, you know, D lineman and even corners. But Aaron Rodgers is like, again, I told you, all he's like an executive. He's talking about everything. Unbaited, he mentions Rich Basaccia. Like he said, the biggest uh, improvement we need on this whole team is with special teams. So when you got the head of the head of the table, shout out to Roman Reigns. I hope you get better. Leukemia, I don't know what's going on. You off of TV. But um, hey, he the head of the table, man. You know, he he's saying what's going on. And again, y'all better listen. It, you know, he and again, I'm just happy with the front office that they're giving him what he wanted. All he wanted was a little respect. Just just fill him in on shit. You know what I'm saying? And he might be able to help you out. So uh, he was in cahoots with the Packers the whole time with Devontae, the whole time with Sammy Watkins. And another guy he mentions is, is Tyler Davis, y'all. Watch out for this Tyler Davis, because when I talk about again, this is going to be the theme for the day unprompted bro matt lafleur uh i don't know about this last one but the two uh interviews he did before this last one he did he unpromptedly just mentioned tyler davis he used to do that shit about jamal williams a lot and you've seen jamal williams got some burn he got up in the game so tyler davis is going to be playing y'all he seems like he's going to be a force to be reckoned with so y'all got to be ready for it you know and that's another thing you know, motherfuckers come up to me like with the stupidest question and Aaron answered it. Well, who are you going to get to replace Devontae? Bro, ain't nobody going to replace Devontae, probably the best receiver ever in Packers history. I'm going to say he is. And Aaron Rodgers said he was actually shocked that he left because he can. He would have probably gotten every record. Why wouldn't you want to do that for the best franchise ever? Bro, go to fucking Raiders on your last contract, bro, because they're going to be thirsty to get you anyway. They took Jordy when he... He was done. They took James Jones when he was done, bro. Tay, you could have stayed another three years. But anyway, 
Man, imagine we would have got any fuck hypothetics. We're going we're going to stay on track, y'all. Especially, you know, I want this video to go too long and cut off and had to do two videos and all that. So, another thing uh Aaron talked about was um the missing, you know, he missed Nathaniel Hackett, Justin Allen, who left, and uh, one more, Getsy. I believe it was Getsy. But then he said, you know, I was missing him, and I knew it would be different without him. But as soon as I walked in, the, uh, you know, in the quarterback room, and I see Tom Clemens, I felt better. Because you know Rodgers. Hey, he's seen the young Rodgers and the Rodgers that developed. So he can tell you some shit like, hey, nigga, nah, you need to do this over. Or nah, that ain't how I used to see it. Hey. So Tom Clemens is going to be a great addition to this team. I'm so glad they got him because we did love Nathaniel Hackett. We did love Justin Allen. We did. Shit, we love Mike Smith who left. Help our linebackers. And uh, one more who left, Getsy. So, hey, he mentioned that. You see how 12 is just going around talking about the whole organization? He ain't just talking about the offense. He didn't mention the defense. He said the defense is going to be very good and dangerous. He said bringing uh, Sewell back was just, just very big for the team. And again, y'all know me. I'm a Sewell fan. And this is decent, y'all. This little, this is decent. So I'm going to get on me a little props because I'm, I'm, I'm a little faded right now. But yeah, man. QB1 Speaks, I suggest y'all listen to that motherfucking interview. The key points is, he said, limit expectations basically with these rookies. The defense is going to be great. The biggest jump on the whole team we need is on special teams. And he thinks that Versace is the guy to do it. He said the the, the front office, it's all good now. That little rant he had. Hey, they listen. They're, they're including him on shit. That's all he needed, bro. Um, What else? If I fucking miss something, throw it in the comments. What the fuck y'all got from this interview? Oh, and we ain't going to talk about retirement again, but like, I believe he's going to retire a Packer, you know, so ain't nothing wrong with that. That means he might only play three years. He might play just this three years out and say, listen, I'm going to give you all, all my all this three years. If it don't work out, oh, well, if I get a ring, I might retire a year early. So uh, that's it for today, y'all. But I'm just letting y'all know that, you know, 12 has got his hands on everything. He talked about everything. And yeah, your starting receivers is going to be Sammy Watkins and Alan Lazard. I would like to see who's going to be the number one. And um, back in the big homie series too, y'all, I can, hey, am I right or am I right, bro? When you hear Sammy Watkins interview, he's basically saying what I said and what I was asking about. You could probably put my big homie series, Sammy Watkins, and that interview next to each other. It might be it might go together well. And I did that shit way before this nigga did this interview, y'all. So I'm just saying, pay attention to your boy, man. You know, I, I see certain shit. I don't know it all. You know what I'm saying? And I am, hey, I stand to be corrected at all times, man. If y'all got something to disagree with, uh, uh, just say it in the comments, bro. I'm going to hit you back. So, you know, I'm out. I love y'all.